I can't believe people are hitting a panic button on Trevor Lawrence. I'll tell you why they should not be doing that at this point. We'll do it here today on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good people. I am Tony Wiggins here, your host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, your daily Jaguars podcast, where we bring it to you every single day because it's your team every day. And we thank you for always making us your first listen. And I remind you that we are free on all platforms, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube page as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. That's right. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize pick projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That is promo code locked on. It's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Either download the app or go to prizepicks.com. Can't believe we're having this conversation, but we're going to have it. The Jaguars lose 28-22 to Washington. And there were a lot of things that went wrong in that game, but I'm going to admit some of the things that went wrong were because of Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback. Trevor had some throws that ideally he would probably wish he had them back. Um, And that's an actual quote from a question that I asked head coach Doug Peterson yesterday at the uh, Jaguars Monday press conference. I'm going to get to that question and and I'm going to tell you what his answer was. And then what I'm also going to do is share some concerns that I think fans are, are are putting out into the ecosystem and uh, want answered by Trevor Lawrence. Then I'm going to compare Trevor Lawrence to other people, the guys, the quarterbacks that folks are comparing him to. I'm going to do that in segment two. I'm going to talk about, the difference between him and those guys and whether it's an arm talent or a mind or anticipation uh, situation. And then I'm going to talk about the Doug factor and the patience that I believe the Jaguars fans should have uh, as it pertains or, you know, as it goes for Trevor Lawrence, this talk that Trevor isn't it. (laughs) So I, I wonder what it is. That's, that's one of the things that I'm going to talk about today. Like what is it? So go back to the pre-draft process and even before he was eligible to be drafted, Trevor Lawrence was thought of to be a generational talent. And uh, the names that you heard come up were Andrew Luck, um, who probably also didn't live up to his uh, generational uh, projections. Um, John Elway, who, while he's a great quarterback, isn't considered the greatest quarterback of all time. So that just goes to tell you and goes to show you that what usually happens is projections don't always end up the way people think. Now, granted, Andrew Luck was a very, very good player. I'm not going to sit here and tell you he wasn't. And John Elway, of course, is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, whether you think he's the greatest or not, which nobody does, because everyone gives that distinction to um, Brady, of course. But Elway is mentioned in that seven, top seven, top eight range for everybody. I think what happened with, um, I do believe what happened with Trevor so far is there are things that he should do that he needs to improve on. And when you ignore that, then you almost disqualify yourself in the minds of people that ever want to have a true debate about it because, well, the bottom line is, he does need to improve on some things. There are some things that he needs to do differently. However, the the only pushback I give to that is, is when Trent Dilfer and other people who prior to the draft, now some of them were being teachers, man. Like you had dude saying that he was like the fifth best player in the draft and all of this stuff. And and that's absolutely ridiculous. You know, um, that, that just wasn't true. And, um, But there were people that pointed out things that they didn't like about his delivery. They didn't like about his decision-making. 
And they pointed to the fact that he was asked to do things at Clemson where quite naturally those things weren't going to necessarily translate into uh, the NFL right away. And some of those things have come back to be true and no one really, really wants to admit it or, or pay attention to the fact that what happened was there was a, a sense of expectations that were probably too high for Andrew Luck, I mean, for Trevor Lawrence when it comes to the fans. And if you thought that because he was a generational talent and because this franchise had been bad for so long, that what Trevor was going to do is just walk into the NFL and just start dominating, then you were wrong. And everybody could have told you you were wrong. If you thought that he would do what other quarterback like Justin Herbert, Justin Herbert came in and lifted his team. And, and, but I'll say that with a caveat, he replaced the legend, but then he came in and they didn't miss a beat and he threw for all of these yards. But the thing is, is that Justin Herbert was considered a guy who a lot of people didn't like. And I remember doing stories on it. And if you go back and look at the draft process, they talked about his completion percentage and how he was inaccurate in big games. And I did a radio show with a former NFL coach once that said Justin Herbert was the, – the questions was were under pressure, could he play? Now Justin Herbert's lighting the league up, and, and we're looking back like going, what the hell were we thinking and what were we talking about? I think sometimes when the expectations are low and then a guy exceeds them, we view that a lot differently as when the expectations are too high – and someone doesn't live up to it. And then everyone loves to see a failure, especially when it's a big hype. I mean, I wasn't the biggest Tim Tebow as an NFL quarterback fan, but there were some people that went over the top that did not want to see Tim Tebow succeed. Now, because he wasn't successful, he sort of made their day, right? So you're going to always have those people. You're going to always have those people that think the worst of every situation. But here's what I, I caution some Jaguar fans, and I talked to them on the phone yesterday. Don't become what you despise. And what I mean by that is if you thought Trevor was slightly overhyped when he came into the league, don't now go the other way and just go, they need to find a new quarterback. I got news flash for you. I won't even entertain those discussions because I can tell you what, unless he goes out and throws four interceptions every single game, they're going to give him this year and the entirety of next year to get it right. I believe there are fans around here that have Blake Bortles, Blaine Gabbard hangover. And what they're going to do is the first sight that a guy needs to needs more time, they ain't going to have no patience because they're all out of patience. They're all out of patience. They ain't got time for it. So these conclusions are going to come up. Here's what I'm going to do. We've talked about a little bit of whether or not he's a generational talent, whether or not the expectation was too high. How Poorly has he truly played, though. What he did the other day was Trevor Lawrence missed three throws where guys were wide open. And I'd say one of them was still a catchable ball, and, and it was dropped. So people are looking at a very close game saying those things were the difference, especially when you go for it on fourth down. And, and then late when you're trying to get back and, and throw a touchdown and win the game, you got two plays left, and he throws up a wild pass that wobbled and got picked off. It was a terrible throw. It was a terrible decision. So those things are going to be blown up and amplified, and they should. He needs to improve. I asked Doug Peterson yesterday. I asked Doug Peterson about um, that particular point when I asked those those questions here before we um, talk about anything else in segment two I'm going to uh, try to give you the answer on exactly um, what he said here I you know I, I pretty much asked him was it, was it some mechanical issues was it um, was it was it anything mechanical about Trevor was it anything about uh, Trevor um, not making the right choices? Like what exactly, what part of Trevor's performance or how did, you know, these these things go wrong? And, and to be quite honest, I can't necessarily find a quote here. I, I think I can get it. But 
he he basically said this, and and this is the thing that I was really really happy about it. He didn't make excuses. Here it is. I asked him what were some of the main re issues with Trevor, and was it ball placement? I'm on a quote here. It says it's a little of everything. There was some pressure in his face a couple of times. Movement in the pocket could have been better at times. But listen, it's the NFL, and we ask a lot of our quarterback, of Trevor. And there were some really good things that he did during the game, and there are some plays he loved to have back. But I thought overall his vision down the field and what he saw was right on point to what we're trying to get done. So that that's a case right there where you don't have a coach that's sitting there. He's not going to throw him under the bus, but he also ain't trying to – go overboard and pull him from under the bus either not answer the question and say he needs to get better there was some pocket issues some movement issues sometimes it was pressure but it's the nfl and we put a lot of our quarterback and we have a high expectation that's the kind of stuff you want to hear and that's going to help us in segment three when i talk about the doug factor and what trevor needs to improve on so in segment two what i'm going to do here for you guys i'm going to compare trevor lawrence to some guys in the past at this point in their careers and uh it, it may surprise you uh what you see uh when you when you take a look at it and it might give you an idea of why everybody needs to slow down just a little bit on either just like the the folks who tried to anoint him the next king should probably the the people that are trying to now say we need to look for another quarterback i i, I think i muted a block somebody the other day that said the Jags don't have a quarterback he said it after the first drive and it's like you're entitled to your opinion, but there's certain stuff I'm not going to even entertain because that's not what they're going to do. And I don't think that they need to do that at this point. Nobody needs to have that kill shot of a, a mentality at this point because that's, those are just too many mental gym, gymnastics to go through. And there's no need for it right now. So I'm going to tell you about uh, whether it's the things you see, is it an arm talent or is it an anticipation thing? Or is it something else that could be a little bit worse? And I'll do it for you in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars after I tell you guys about prize picks. I didn't win my entries this week, but I came really, really close, and I know you guys understand that close doesn't matter. What is prize picks? Prize picks is a daily fantasy game where uh, prizepicks.com makes entries on player projections, and then you have to decide whether you're going to go more or less with those players on their projections. Now, you choose between two and five players, and if they will score more or less, then their prize pick projections, you can win up to 10 times your money. Now, there's a way where you play a flex where you don't have to get them all correct, but you just win less and less. But if you get them all right, you can win up to 10 times your money. Now, you download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. Now, first time users, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Price picks will give you $100 in promo cash. Now, if you deposit 50, you will get 50. So don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for instant deposit match up to $100 at prizepicks.com. I got to holler at you about Athletic Greens, man, because Athletic Greens have really, really, really helped your boy get his thing together. Now, I use the AG1. And what the AG1 is, AG1 is. It's a, a mix that you use with like a cup of water. You shake it up and you take that thing down. And what it what it gives you is it gives you the equivalent of up to 75 high quality vitamins. That's what you're absorbing. Minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics and adaptogens. I have personally had issues with gut health and I really, really do appreciate the fact that there's a product like AG1 that will help me uh, have all of the nutrients and also soothe me and keep me right throughout the day now the healthy facts is you can use it with any uh lifestyle whether it's keto paleo vegan dairy free or dairy free or gluten that's a good deal and um, it works for me and i'm sure to work for you to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash locked uh, uh, NFL Network. Let me read it again. Athleticgreens.com forward slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I'm telling you, it will not let you down. Within a matter of days, you will feel that much better. It's athleticgreens.com forward slash NFL Network. 
We thank you for joining us here on Locked on Jaguars and making us your first listen. We are eternally grateful for you doing that because it's your team every day. We're talking about Trevor Lawrence and all of this panic, and I know everyone's looking at that title going, Wig, why are you even wasting your time? Well, because it's a lot of things that folks are discussing. And people have the right to be concerned about their football team. And then the Jaguars have this unique history of failing and, and especially failing at that quarterback position. What happened is, man, too, there was a lot of – there was so many podcasts and so many shows, and it was Trevor this, Trevor that. It was Trevor all over the billboards. It was Trevor getting in front of the microphone last year like a press secretary, just constantly talking about things that didn't have anything to do with football. So I really, really do think there are two things that people are overlooking. I look at this like Trevor's rookie year. I think the only thing that I can take from last year was he got a chance to take a look at the, the speed of the game and get used to that from that perspective. But everything else was a wash. Anything and everything else that happened in that rookie year with Urban Meyer's head coach. And by the way, I'm going to stop mentioning him uh, eventually. I hope we can get to the point where his presence here becomes irrelevant. But for the sake of this argument, I'm talking about Trevor Lawrence's rookie year. And you cannot look back at his rookie year without taking a hard look at why the rookie year stunk and why the whole thing needs to just go out of the window with the exception of him being able to learn how to play uh, because, of, you know, take a look at the speed of the game. There was nothing. There was garbage in and garbage out last year. It was nothing productive about anything from last year that's going to help him now. So I look at that as almost a negative because he actually had some bad things going on and he saw what an NFL locker room and a staff was not supposed to look like. Now, this doesn't – this is not necessarily against the assistants. This is not the quarterback's coach. It's not any of those people. But when the top and the head is dysfunctional, all of it is dysfunctional. And I don't think he got the benefit of actually learning what he was supposed to be doing. So I look at this like his rookie year. But for the sake of everything, we can't just discount the fact that he actually did play and put up some poor numbers last year. Right? Right. So what I'm going to show you is this. In his first 18 games, 17 last year and one this year. Trevor Lawrence has 13 touchdowns and 18 picks. That's not good. He's completing 59% of his passes. Let me show you somebody. I know I mentioned Justin Herbert the last uh, minute, and I'll get back to him uh, in a second. And I'm not going to bring up Patrick Mahomes because at this point in Patrick Mahomes' career, the second season that he had been in the NFL after week one, Patrick Mahomes only had two starts. He started one game as rookie where he didn't throw a touchdown and he threw a pick and he completed about 62% of his passes. And then, of course, his second year, he got off to a better start. So at this point in Patrick Mahomes' career, he only had two starts to Trevor, Trevor having 18. And he played for a really good team that won the Super Bowl his second year, right? Justin Herbert walked into the league and immediately had Austin Eckler, uh, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams. And a real good defense. Jaguars didn't have that here. Josh Allen. Good defense. But let me show you something about Josh Allen's numbers. I said Trevor was at 59% with 13 tutties and 18 picks. Josh Allen's first 28 games, which is the first two full seasons that he was a, he was a starter. He started 12 games one year and 16 the other. 56%. Completion percentage with 30 touchdowns and 21 picks. And the variance between the touchdowns and the picks really picked up the second half of the second season. You get my point now. I hope you do. Because my point is, Josh Allen wasn't that, that good and, and Patrick Mahomes had barely played at this same time in their careers. And those are probably the two best quarterbacks in the league. And you throw Justin Herbert in who came in and had a cast around him that I probably could have gone out and, and completed some passes. The Jaguars organization was at an all time low. So when you compare where Trevor is now to where other people are or were, you have to take that in consideration. There were some throws yesterday Patrick Mahomes, as well as Justin Herbert, where they made these crazy throws. And I even quote tweeted one and was like, sheesh, man, that's unreal. And everybody quote tweeted it and tagged and said, now that's what generational looks like. Don't you think for one minute Trevor Lawrence can't make that throw, that he doesn't have the arm talent to make that throw. 
And there's these things that are being compounded and convoluted when you think about the opinions that people have and what the basis of the opinion is. So when you say generational, are you mean arm talent wise? Sure. Jameis Winston could make those throws. If you're talking about anticipate anticipatory and mine, now I'll give you the floor. Does he anticipate those throws? And can he make those throws in a game because he knows he can let the ball go? That is something that if you want to debate that or argue with me about that, I will give you the floor all day. I don't know the answer to that question because I haven't played that position or coached that position like that, and I'll leave that to the experts. If anything, that's what he needs to improve on. So then you ask, okay, what is that? Does it mean he doesn't have a high football IQ? Does it mean he doesn't trust his arm? Does it mean he's being like Jay Cutler? And what I mean by that is a pick-and-stick quarterback. And I think I either got that term from Sean Salisbury or, or Trent Dilfer, meaning I have to see it first and then I trust my arm that once I see it. And Jameis Winston does this and it leads him to throw a lot of interceptions. I'm not going to throw it until I see it, but I know I can wait because my arm is strong enough to do it. Whereas those other guys, they all have strong arms and they're not waiting until they see it. They're throwing it, anticipating that it's going to happen and running to running the ball into the receiver. If you want to argue that with me, sure. I'll listen to you all day on that. I don't know that that's what Trevor's doing or not. But some people are claiming that he's holding the ball too long. That could be because he doesn't want to make a mistake and he doesn't want to force things. But then some people will say, well, that's because he doesn't see it. And then maybe there's a balance here that we have to strike that maybe he does see it and maybe he doesn't. And he has to start figuring it out. And we're just sitting here watching him go through that learning process. And we're the ones that are being impatient. Either way, whether I'm right or you're right or whoever's right about whatever, it's too early to determine that. Doug says he needs to improve. You can think that he needs to improve, but also not think that he won't ever improve. You don't have to draw, you don't have to take a hard line or a hard stance either way. And anybody that takes a hard stance is like, he's going to improve. I know he's going to be all right, or he'll never. You don't know that. I don't know he's going to ever be what we hope. I also don't know that he won't be. I can't draw that conclusion. And I don't think anybody in their right mind can draw that conclusion either. And if you do, you're just probably reaching or just trying to be too early or be fast. And you don't always have to do that. I'm going to talk about why you can have confidence that things are going to get better and speak on what I believe is the duck factor. And I'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. After I tell you about betonline.net, which is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Now, I got off to a pretty good start and then – some upsets really, really hurt my ticket, including the Bears winning the game. That one crushed me. And then Minnesota, they won their game against Green Bay, and that one hurt me too. But you don't have to be like me. You can do better because Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, e sports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, not just football, baseball is Rolling right along, boxing. Mike Trout has gotten hot, by the way. I don't know who's going to win that MVP between him and Judge, but we'll just have to take a look. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action because Bet Online is where the game starts. And you start here with us here on Locked On Jaguars, making us your first listen because it's your team every day, and we are very, very grateful. Let me calm you all down a little bit why I think it's okay for you guys to, or all of us to be a little bit patient with Trevor Lawrence and just. Like I said, don't put yourself through the mental gymnastics. Let it all play itself out. It's because Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson is a Super Bowl winning coach, and he won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles, and they beat Brady and Belichick. You have had the firsthand knowledge of watching Nick Foles. Y'all couldn't stand him. You thought he was terrible. Anybody that can take that guy and win a Super Bowl against the greatest defensive coach and maybe the greatest coach in history – and go mano a mano and lay a 40-burger on Tom Brady and Belichick, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And I give him the benefit of the doubt because he's not protective. He's not overly protective. He's not going to sit here and blame everything else 
on the shortcomings of his quarterback. He's going to say it's a combination of all of that, including him. But one thing he did say is that they watched the tape and what he saw, what Trevor saw on tape and what he was trying to do is what Doug saw too. And that that's a good thing. And 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 folks are, are telling me that it's not the, the hard throws. Where he can do that. It's the easy ones that he's missing. I will agree with you. But also another reason for you to be calm and another reason for you to just lay low, like Snoop Dogg says, is you're asking a very talented dude to do something that's very easy. You're not asking a less than talented guy to do something that's difficult. You're not asking Gardner Minshew to throw the ball harder and have more velocity and challenge the deep middle of the field. No. You're not asking Blake Bortles to do something that he can't do and hope that he improves. You're asking a guy with superior talent that's what's so frustrating to everybody. What's so frustrating is, is the easy things are, are not being done. And so you have to get to the reason why. Is it his feet? Or is he eager? Is he trying too hard to make plays? Is he just not letting things come to him? Is he just not relaxed? Has he not put a, enough stuff together? Because if you think about it, if you take away the beginning of the game and the end of the game, you look at the middle of the game where Trevor got really hot, that's where he was really good. So that's the variance that has to go away. It's like the great throw and then the terrible throw. So we got to, we got to, we got to, while this can stay here, we got to pull this floor up a little bit, right? And make, because I will admit, if he makes one or two throws that he missed the other day, the Jaguars probably win the game. It wasn't the only reason they didn't win, but just looking at it from his responsibility, there are things that he could have done the other day that if he did them, the Jaguars would have won the game. The biggest part of that is I believe he owns that. And I think he's going to improve, and I hope he's going to get better. Whether or not he's going to end up being a generational talent, I don't know. I do think that he's good enough. I think if you take Trevor Lawrence and put him on that team in Philly, they win that game easier than they did with Nick Foles. So I think he's capable of being that guy. The only other thing you can question is, is he has it? does he have it in here? And I think he does. Does he want it? I think he does. This won't be a panic moment for me unless we start seeing body language or hearing rumblings from his teammates that they don't believe in him. Because that's what I heard with Blake. I heard that with the boat. I saw it. They didn't believe in him. I saw it with Gardner. Body language, they didn't believe in him. So coaches, that's the only thing that's going to make a coach decide, okay, this ain't going to work out here because – when guys in the locker room, they they might say one thing, but they can't hide it long. It, it can't. It, it can't. The, the confidence you can see the body language. And right now, that is nowhere near going on. In fact, it's the other way. Those guys have the most confidence in Trevor Lawrence. So don't think about. Just be patient, man. Just calm down and wait and let it play itself out. If he's not good enough, you won't need me or anybody else to come over here and advocate for him. You will know. You will know. We will all know. But we have to not confuse the hype and our hope with what reality really is. The reality is he hasn't played that much poorly than some other great quarterbacks who were playing at this same point in their career. But also, I'll tell you that most of those people don't, most of those guys didn't play for an organization that have been through what the Jaguars have been through. So that's why the expectation level is a little bit differently. Make sure you check out the Peacock and Williamson podcast. Make that your second listen because it is outstanding. Brian Peacock and his co-host, a former NFL scout, and Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes, and it's free and available wherever you get your podcast. We're going to start talking about those ugly coats and get you guys ready for a Thursday crossover edition. Of course, that will occur. We'll do the news and notes of the day tomorrow and start – talking about the Jaguars and what they need to do uh, as a whole to uh, move forward. Um, take a look at James Robinson too, man. That's a feel good story that he was able to come back as quickly as he was able to come back. And then look at the free agency class 
on the defensive side and ask yourself, did the Jaguars miscalculate on some guys in the front seven? So we'll take a look at that in our next episode. Until then, you guys take care of each other, and we'll see you next time here on Locked on Jaguars.